What's up ladies and gentlemen, Neon Pow here, and today we're doing the finale to What If Naruto Was Raised by the Akatsuki. That meaning you have not seen any of the previous videos. I have that playlist linked in the description and in the card above, so make sure to check that out. And also for this last episode to this long going series, I need you guys to show that massive support. So make sure to smash that like button and show me the beast you are going to be. We're going to try to go for 300 likes this video. And also, if you're new to the channel or you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you do not miss the next series. It's going to be good guys and it's going to be chosen by you. Now, let's hop right into this. In the last episode, we left Naruto to fight and defeat the tyrant Danzo and retrieve Shushui's other eye. Naruto has now quickly made his way with Kim to the Mist Village to recover their friend's memories. However, the duo is shocked to find that Obito and Sasuke working together and attacking their friends. We were left with Kimimaru unconscious and Haku's tailed beast being extracted. Naruto uses his Rinnegan to pull Haku towards him and away from the enemies just in time to save him. This show of power throws Obito into a frenzy as now he is aware that Naruto has control over the Rinnegan. He is extremely aggravated and appalled that Nagato would bestow Naruto the Dojutsu. With that, Obito has no other choice but to retreat for now. He could most definitely put up a good fight as he is practically untouchable, but he can't risk Sasuke getting captured or injured before he has fully used up his purpose. Anyways, as far as Obito is concerned, they were able to acquire enough of the Three Tails Chakra to continue onto his plan of summoning the Tin Tails. Obito uses Kamui on both of them and the two escape the potential battle. Naruto is still confused about what's going on, but there's no time to worry about the enemies as his two friends are in critical condition. Fortunately, Kim's extensive medical training comes to use and she immediately works on stabilizing the two. Once they come to, Naruto asks if either of them knew what was going on with Obito and Sasuke and why they attacked him. The best Haku can remember is that they were training and attempting to hone their skills when Sasuke showed up. They were confused on why he was there alone and thought maybe something bad had happened. In the next few seconds, they were surprised attack with Kimimaro straight slapped to the floor and Haku pinned down to the floor having his chakra sucked out of him. Naruto questions why would Sasuke willingly assist Obito, especially after he was forced to kill his brother because of him. What Naruto did know, however, was that it was time to give Kimimaro back his memories and acquire another old ally. Naruto explains that he took care of Danzo and that he will never be causing them a problem again. Also, he was able to acquire Sushui's eyes. Kimimaro's whole face lit up after hearing this. He couldn't believe he would finally get his memories back. Naruto quickly switches out one of his Rinnegan with the eye, activates the jutsu, and now they wait. Kimimaro has his eyes closed, but once he opens them again, he sees Naruto in a new light, the light of an old friend. He smiles and embraces his old friend, now expressing a true reunion. Unfortunately, their time is cut short with Haku zoning them back into the details at hand. Obito is at large, and apparently with Sasuke under his control. From what he witnessed, they will need to get much stronger than they are now if they hope to stand a chance against the Uchiha's, especially if Obito is now plotting something more since he now knows Naruto possesses the Renegon. Naruto understands that the best course of action will be to master their tailed beast power. He tells Kurama that he hopes he is ready as he will need to be the star of the show very soon. Kurama sighs as he's been enjoying his peace and quiet. Now, moving over to Obito and Sasuke, Obito is furious at the fact that Naruto has the Renegon, and this fact makes this plan almost impossible now as the Dojutsu was the key to his infinite Tsukiyomi plan. He thinks there's a possibility he could steal them back, but with Naruto's arsenal of Jutsu, it would prove very difficult. Sasuke is standing there watching Obito pace back and forth. Sasuke, who is under Kotoamu Tsukami, sees that his master is frustrated and chimes in by saying that maybe he could get the Renegon? He calls Obito, telling him that the story of Madara and how he achieved it by infusing his body with Hashirama's cells. Obito tells him that it couldn't possibly work, since his body already uses Hashirama's cells, but he wasn't able to unlock it. Sasuke then reiterates his hypothesis by saying that he has the eternal Mangeku Sharingan. Obito looks in awe as that could have been the missing piece. As we know, Sasuke is the reincarnation of Indra, so this plan has a high chance of success. 
While Obito is experimenting on Sasuke, Naruto is training with Kimimaru, Kid, and Haku to get stronger and save Sasuke so that they can finally put an end to Obito's tyranny. Fortunately, Obito would need some time to work on Sasuke's path to the Renegon and get him familiar with it, so our crew has some time to prepare for the upcoming battle. Through weeks of training, Naruto, with the cooperation of Kurama, finally masters Nine Tails Chakra Mode. In combination with his Curse Mark Sage Mode, combining all these powers with the Renegon pushes Naruto to one of the fastest and strongest shinobi to date. On top of that, Naruto finally teaches Haku to fully control his Tailed Beast power so he can turn into the Tailed Beast form a great aid to the final battle. On the villain's front, Obito's working tirelessly to get his plan ready. To his surprise, the Hashirama Cell infusion was a success! Sasuke was able to awaken the Renegon! Obito lets Sasuke experiment and learn the powers of the new dojutsu as he has bigger fish to fry. Obito actually sends off Sasuke to acquire the remaining piece of the Ten Tails by extracting some of the Eight Tails. Unlike Canon, where Sasuke gets bodied by B, he was able to hold on his own and even eventually extract a piece of the Eight Tails using the Renegon. Fortunately, B was slick enough to escape before Sasuke killed him. With that, Obito now has a piece of every tailed beast, enough to complete the Ten Tails ritual. At this point, he's ready to initiate his war on the entire shinobi world. He also has the Zetsu army ready to attack the shinobi fleet. The shinobi nation still forms so that they can hold off the filler army. However, the real fight, and fight that will announce the winner of the battle, will be between Naruto Squad and Obito. Both parties know that the other is standing in the way to victory and will meet each other on the front lines. Before Obito leaves for the battle, he places in his final trump card. He turns Sasuke into the Ten Tails Shinshuriki. As the yin and yang of this story meet face to face on the battlefield, Naruto and his friends are flabbergasted by the sight they see before them. The friend they once knew and were so familiar with looked completely different. He had dark balls orbiting him white skin and horns protruding out of his head. Naruto yells at Obito Atsu why he's doing this to Sasuke. Naruto attempts to talk with Sasuke, reminding him about their time together and the many years they spent training as friends. Sasuke just looks at Naruto blankly, with no form of expression. Obito just begins laughing maniacally and tells him that he used Kotoa Mutsukami on Sasuke and that he is completely under his control now. To add some icing on top of the cake, he also says that he has hidden Sushui's eye. Naruto is furious to hear all of this, but he has one hope, as Obito hasn't learned they also have one of Sushui's eyes. Naruto is indeed saddened by the lifeless monster his friend has become, but has hope he will be able to bring him back. He whispers to Haku that he will try to use a pincer attack on Sasuke and wants him to use the eye to bring their friend back. With that, the big fight between Naruto and Sasuke begins. As the fight goes on, Naruto reminisces on the memory that the two always said they would go all out with each other and have a serious battle. However, Naruto never thought it would end like this. Naruto is currently in his activated Curse Mark Sage Mode and KCM. The two teams seem relatively equal, however the difference is that Naruto's Sage Mode does give him an upper hand, however it's on a short time limit. He has to move quickly with his plan. To distract Sasuke, he sends over a barrage of Rosin Shuriken, all of which Sasuke absorb or deflect. However, when the smoke clears, Sasuke has lost sight of Naruto. In a matter of seconds, Naruto and a horde of clones pop out of the ground, holding Sasuke down. Naruto then yells for Haku to activate Sushui's eye. This is a shock to Obito as he didn't realize he had one in possession. He can't let his trump card get taken and begins rushing over. However, he is just short of late. Haku activates the eye and everyone turns quiet. Our friends wonder if it worked. Naruto begins calling out to Sasuke. Instead of a cheerful response from his friend, Sasuke begins screeching and throwing Naruto off of him. Naruto is confused about why the jutsu didn't work. Obito, now seeing Kimimaro on their side, realizes that those fools must have already used the eye on him. He chuckles and exclaims that the fools have already wasted their one chance on returning Sasuke to them. Since none of them are Ochiha or have Hashirama cells, the cool-off for Kotoa Mutsukami is a decade long. After hearing this, Naruto pounds the ground in anger. How could they be so foolish? They should have known there was a catch. Naruto stands up and begins looking at Sasuke. He sighs and says, 
This must have been the sacrifice Nagato was talking about. Naruto has a few tears run down his face, but understands what must be done for the greater of the world. Since Kotoamutsukami is irreversible at this point, Naruto is forced to kill Sasuke with the Ten Tails to save the world. One of the ultimate sacrifices. As difficult as may be, he plans to get a three-way attack with Kimimaru and Haku. Haku can use Sage Jutsu, so he's left to distract Sasuke. He does this by shooting out a flurry of tailed beast bombs in combination with his crystal ice mirrors. This leaves Sasuke disoriented. Kimimaru then fires a barrage of scorching hot bones from behind. Sasuke, even while being disorientated, deflects some of the bones, but some of them nick his leg. For the final attack, Naruto comes at Sasuke in a frontal assault. He uses Renegon in an attempt to crush Sasuke with a bunch of rocks, but Sasuke uses his Renegon to push them away. It seems like their Renegon Jutsus are countering each other. Naruto then throws his infused Seiji Jutsu sword at Sasuke, aiming for his heart. However, Sasuke grabs it before it reaches him. As the plan looks to have failed, Naruto surprises everyone by transferring spots with the sword and smashes a massive tailed beast bomber's Sengon in Sasuke's abdomen. Naruto, crying, tells his old comrade that it's been a fun ride as Sasuke disintegrates away. Now that Sasuke has been defeated, the only person left to take care of is Obito. Unfortunately, he is practically invincible because no one can touch him. All hope looks to be lost, but Naruto has been practicing a very difficult technique that could work. He will attempt to use his Renegon to jump to Obito's dimension. He can only travel to places he has physically been before, and fortunately, he has been to this dimension many times before when he was a child in the Akatsuki. Obito doesn't readily make this connection. Naruto's team begins to put his plan into action quickly. Haku shoots out a tailed beast bomb, Obito unfazed as he knows their efforts are useless. However, when he teleports to his dimension, he is greeted by a furious Naruto holding a tail beast resin shuriken bomb. Naruto unleashes the attack immediately as his jutsu shreds through Obito. He yells that this is for Sasuke and Nagato. As things quiet down, Naruto uses the dimensional travel to get back to the real world. He feels internally defeated. He has lost so many people. Nagato was right all along. Many sacrifices have to be made to achieve peace. Even with that, Naruto vowed to use his power to make the world a place where future children could live without the corruption of malice. He would take all the evil into him. And that's where we're ending the final episode. Now guys, I hope you enjoyed this journey as it's definitely been a long time to finish this series, but it was all worth it. So please make sure to show that support by liking this video, sharing it with anyone you know, and leaving comments down below as I love interacting with all of you. But until the next video, my peeps, much love, Neon out.